Um, I don't really want Giant Killer. I already got one, and I'm not gonna lie. Giant Killer has felt very underwhelming in this deck. Very underwhelming. So, sorry to, to sort of kick you out to the curb there, Giant Killer. But you're just not that good. I want to get this Ox down, and I, I, I should really let them know that I'm thinking. So we're definitely dropping Ox. That's 10,000% happening. Thing is, we're going to gain three mana from Colossal Plow coming up, right? Do I want to go ahead and drop a Beast? I think so. So they're, they're definitely going to, you know, uh, put down a Thieves Guild and be like, Oh, I got your Plow now! <laughs> By the way, I, I only just now realized that Plow and now Rom. That tells you how how slow I am. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name's Chance. Today, we're diving into a Relic Plow deck. This is a Slesnia deck that hit Mythic. That's right, Slesnia is finally hitting Mythic, and I'm not talking about with plus one, plus one counters and surprising the foe in the first four turns with a little cheap trickery. I'm just kidding. I love that deck as much as you guys. Yeah. Anyways, we're working off of Relic Golem this time and Colossal Plow. We've all seen the Mardu Colossal Plow decks where you get down Croaks and you you crew the plow out, you know, that, that's cool. Really, I, I respect that deck and I love it. Love where your mind game's at. But anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Today, we're gonna be playing Relic Golem alongside it. The idea, you drop plow on turn two, you drop golem on turn three, and by turn three, there you go. You're off to the races with your plow. We also have Love Struck Beast, which can help crew the plow. We have Mammoth, which again, you know, you drop one land, now this thing's up to a 5-5, five, five. so you tap this plus an edge wall or a giant killer, which you probably dropped on turn one, and again, you're up to crew in that plow, turn three. So the idea here is, the idea, <laughs> the idea here is to crew for the plow, get it online, have this six power creature swinging in early, gaining the extra manage, the manage, the mana advantage, I guess is what we would call that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, taking over the game with your higher end cards. Now we have four copies of Amiria's Call. Some decks that might seem a little expensive, but in a deck where you gain, you know, three white mana from Plow, you really only need four lands down and boom, you can give all your creatures indestructible for, you know, a set of turns, your turn, your opponent's turn. And you can create two four fours that have flying, which is insane value if you think about hitting this on turn four, right? Turn four. Crazy! Two four fours and indestructible on all your creatures. Anyways, we also have your Sharn in the deck, a card that I don't think sees enough love and play. It'll help to deal with anyone using Fable Passages or any kind of sack uh, outlet, right? Also, it helps you to draw out your lands if you're not able to find the plow and ramp up and do all that kind of stuff. This is a great card. You look in your deck and you find a plane, you find a forest, pull them out and slam a jam of one of them down if you haven't played a land yet. We have Shepherd of the Flocks to help us bounce back Giant Killer and Love Struck Beast so we can replay it off the edge wall or off the Great Hinge or reuse the Giant Killer effect to, you know, take out additional enemies. We have one copy of Ooze, which I found a little funny, but, you know, hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Moving behind the rocks! This is, again, designed as a best of three deck. We're not a best of three player, but the sideboard is there if you want to play it. You know, you do what you want to with the deck. Y'all know me. I'm best of one Andy. So that's going to pretty much do it for the deck tech breakdown. We do have the Giant Ox as well to help us crew with the plow, which is really nice against aggro decks, obviously, because it's a big 0-6. But, I mean, honestly, this deck is pretty straightforward. Edge wall draws cards with the adventurers. Your adventure cards do what they say they do. If I can stop the, the hiccups, <laughs> they do what they say they do and, uh, you know, draw you cards the edge wall. They act as creatures. They can help crew for your plow. Essentially, we're just trying to gain mana advantage here. We're trying to gain card advantage off the back of the plow, off the back of the Great Hinge, off the back of the Yasharn, and, well, really just beat our opponent down in the face, right? Beat them down, beat them up. Do whatever we need to do to win the game. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to dive right in to this Relic Plow deck. Casper, the Friendly Ghost, is going to be our photo today. I'm going to keep this. We have a 1-2-3 play. Not that we have 1-2-3 mana, because we have the temples. I may drop a temple turn one. You know, Edgewall is good, but we don't actually have any adventure. Well, never mind, because there's our, there's our three mana, so I'm just going to, you know, 1-2-3. I know how to count. Do you? I'm sure you do. You'd be playing Magic. You're watching my video. You gotta know how to count in some regard, right? All right, Casper, don't be too harsh on me. I've heard rumors that you're a friendly ghost, and you know, well, I, I would like for those to stay true. Don't let me, don't let me, don't make me go leave you a bad Yelp review. 
you know as well as I do, those make and break a uh, ghost, you know? One one bad review and you're you're out of here, son. Ghost thing. I I don't feel like swinging in with Edgewall Innkeeper is really a smart play here. Like, what if they have a Flash creature? I'm just going to say no attacks. I don't know what they have, so... Casper, I don't trust you. That's what I'm saying, all right? Friendly ghosts or not, you're still a ghost. And there's something uh, something a little uneasy about ghosts, right? You just pop out of nowhere. You can go through walls and I can't. That's a little unfair, don't you think? Oh... <sighs> Boy, the things that I talk about in my in my spare time. You should really hear the conversations I have when I'm alone. As opposed to now when I have a whole audience sitting behind me. <laughs> I like the thought sometimes um, when you're watching content creators, when you're watching YouTubers. Thinking about how they, they are, in fact, just a singular person sitting in a room. You know... Sometimes there's setups or whatever, streamer setups. Um, but for the large majority, you know, you're just sitting alone in a room, talking to yourself, and everyone, everyone's just sort of normalized by the idea of it now. We can't do anything with that three white mana because you got to tap Relic Golem in order to tap it to target and mill them. But, you know, still, I'll, I'll take the six damage, the three life gain. I'll take Plow and the Foe. <laughs> Try to only do that in the bedroom, but you know, every once in a while, you gotta you gotta put a smack down on people. You gotta let them know what's up. Walk in and put a plow down, if you know what I mean. Any hoosers, um, Casper, I'm gonna need you to do a little action because <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just rambling at this point. It's not really good for anybody. <laughs> uh, let's try turning this plow online again. Yeah, go plow, go. Hopefully they won't try and remove it. That'd be unfortunate. I feel like they're going to try and remove it, you know? Some of that eliminate action, yeah. Yeah. I see you out there doing your thing. I'm playing the uh, the forest so we can exile at least one of our creatures, build the ooze up. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, let's see if, uh, if they don't have a Heartless Act or something here. Perfect. Perfection. So on this following turn, we don't have too many plays. Might should have dropped the Temple of Plenty, but I, you know, I wanted to exile something. I wanted to, want to get the ooze ball rolling, you know what I mean? Um, we're still quite a ways away from Amiria's Call, though, right? Four, five, six. Yeah, we're still two away. They create a 1-1 one, one Bluebird token here. Do they use it to chum block, though? That's the question. That is the question. Hey, another Colossal Plow. Let's go. Of course, we're going to slam a jam and that one down. I don't really want another Amiria's Call. I appreciate the effort, though, game. I do, I do. I do, indeed. So we're going to try swinging in with Scavenging Ooze. Of course, I can tap the Plow here. They didn't block. Not tap the Plow. Tap the Golem. I'm going to mill them before they draw this card. I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling like it's going to be something spicy. So <laughs> let's just mill it. We don't have any creatures. Otherwise, I, I might consider you know using the Ooze, building our damage. We milled them a land and a Skyclave Apparition. The Apparition, I'm happy to take away. The land, you know, I depending depending really if we if we can stick them at five fine by me you know control decks hate being stuck as far as mana goes but if they have a handful of lands already then we kind of helped them out so we'll see they're they're deciding on which creature or which artifact to take out here I, I believe at least deciding on the amount of damage they can take something they're doing some calculations essentially casper not only a friendly ghost he's also a huge mathematician Little did you know, that's right. Graduated college as a valedictorian. Master of math. On the side, Casper likes to do people's taxes and take long walks on the beach. It's... So they should go odd here, right? To get rid of the relic golem? Do they have a plan for getting rid of Colossal Plow? Or... A heartless act, maybe? 
I don't know. I, I'm hoping they don't have anything, obviously. <clears throat> Being able to get Amiria's call down, thanks to the plow, would be nice. It is indeed a heartless act. <laughs> Another plow, that actually, that's okay. That'll that'll do, pig, that'll do. Um, I don't think it'll allow us to get down Amiria's call because we have to t get it down onto the board. But, you know, now we can potentially... Uh, crew the plow, right? I think I think we can crew a plow with a plow. Maybe not because it's not technically a creature yet. It's just a, an artifact vehicle. So maybe not. Maybe I'm getting my hopes up for nothing. But we're at six mana, which means one more mana, and we're good to go. Maybe I shouldn't have kept that giant killer on top, honestly. Ah, well, you, you live and you learn, and you know that's the whole thing with this channel. We're we're learning together. Two years of learning together. Two plus years actually. We're going on three, which is Crazy. It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Treacherous Blessings opponent is going to draw some cards here. Maybe move that Yorion over? Yeah. Yes, very nice. So you can't you can't crew a plow with a plow? It's like when I'm right, I'm right. And when I'm wrong, I could have been right. So I'm still right because I could have been wrong. That makes sense. That's fine. We can take out their Yorion with our giant killer, though. And that, you know, that's a play. That's a, <laughs> that's a move. Alrighty. So, Casper, you haven't been too friendly so far, if, if I'm being honest. Your Google review is going to reflect poorly. One star. You know what they say about one star places. Nobody ever goes there. You're eventually going to turn into a ghost town, Casper. You get it? Casper the ghost town, the friendly ghost, lives in a ghost town. Anyways, I'm not that funny. It's just the edits that make me funny. <laughs> Yorion, Borion, Snorion. Now, obviously, we need to try and destroy this Yorion before they can draw more cards. Um, they're going to get to draw more cards just because Yorion's going to get to proc. But this can hopefully minimize the chances of them finding counter magic, which I don't know what counter magic they would have to stop Giant Killer. Maybe a negate or something. I don't know. But we want to stop it if possible. So they're going to draw, what, five cards here? Woo! At least they're going to have to discard some, hopefully. Anything we draw should be beneficial, right? Land, cool beans, we got an Amiria's Call. Non-land? Uh, well, you know, it's a non-land. It's a, it's a giant killer. God, I got to... I really need to start biting my tongue on, on this whole anything is fine phrase. Nothing can go wrong. They said, <laughs> magic will be fun. They said, you'll win lots of games. <laughs> Alrighty, Casper. Mono y mono, square up, ghost. I'm gonna pull that sheet off your head and reveal you're nothing more than a than a cranky old man off of Scooby Doo. Archon is really bad for us really bad for us luckily luckily we have giant killers so we can tap it we can't kill it with one of our giant killers because you know of course it has <laughs> it has that uh that mana that mana issue hey we hit a land isn't that lucky 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 we can crew up a, a boat or a plow a boat <laughs> so if i do this I send you up, gain three, which doesn't really do too much for us, but we might can play down the other giant killer. But don't I want to keep an angel up? But I can't, I can't attack with the plow if I keep an angel up. You know what? Let's go. Let's go, plow. There's no need for you to sit back, standing around all day. Attacketh. Do I get down the other giant killer? They're blocking with the Archon. No way. No way, Jose. All right, well, that happened. That totally, totally happened. I guess we played on Giant Killer. What? Oh. I guess... I guess we played on Giant Killer. <laughs> there's no need to tap their creature. As much as I would love to do it just out of shenanigans, there's no reason, right? No rhyme or reason. I don't actually know that crewing our plow up there was the best play but our angels couldn't attack and i knew that i wanted to attack you know 
I want to put the pedal to the metal, put a little pressure on as well. We're top decking and they are not. So they're going to go even here and get rid of our angels. That's fine. Giant killer. St standing steady. Standing steady. You just can't get rid of these, these little one mana creatures. Eventually, no, actually you can't. I was going to say, eventually we'll have enough giant killers to crew up our colossal plows, but that's actually not not a, not a possibility. <laughs> so we can find another relic golem. That'd be cool. I could use giant killer, tap their Yorion, crew up the plow, swing a Ruski, knock them down to five life. Obviously, I'm a fan of that. Um, what other plays? We, all, we almost have the mana to just straight up giant, or not giant killer, to just straight up cast Great Hinge. So this actually costs three mana to return, and then that would cost five. But we can do it on their turn, and then you come down for three, four, five. We almost have enough to crew up the plow. All right, let's go to their upkeep, all right? Uh, no attacks, in turn. Before they get a chance to really draw, you know what I mean? Because if they draw, they had a better chance of finding counter magic. We really don't want them to find counter magic. Resolve. Oh, I forget I didn't have to target. I just I just select. Alright, so we assassinated the Yorion. Let's remove that stop past the main. Resolve. So yeah, we have five attack. I mean, we do just need one more giant killer now. So now I do feel a little bit more okay saying I'm almost okay with whatever we draw. Please don't let it be a land. <laughs> Another Archon. That's fine. Again, we have the giant killer. We can tap it. Probably should have... Oh, well. Yeah, I probably should have tapped it before when I attacked. Before I passed the blockers, I should have used the giant killer to tap it. I think I could have done that. I don't know. Doom foretold. Gonna make us sack the giant killer because I'm not gonna sack the plow, obviously. Obviously. They're gonna sack Omen, which is unfortunate for us because they do have good sacking targets. Oh, no! Alright. It, it's a GG. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. They got us. Radicast. And we'll keep this. We need to go second, which means, you know, we, we get the first draw. So we might can find some land there. If so, I would be very happy. We're going up against rogues. No way, Jose. I've always wanted to go up against a rogues deck. I've, I've heard legends. I've heard rumors that they, that they existed, that they were still around. You know, some had said that they went exist, exist, they went extinct. But here they are. The fabled rogues. Bum, bum, bum. I'm not swinging in with the 1-1 one, because one, I don't want them to have the Soaring Thought Thief and then kill my 1-1, one, one, you know? So, I'll just let them drop the Thought Thief. It's no big deal. No Thought Thief. No Thought Thief. Well. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Now, we do have a problem here because if they have a Drown in the Lock and I play my Love Struck, which... Actually, I can't unless I bolt this down, huh? It's a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. I want to, but I know they have Drown in the Lock. I know they, they got to, right? We have two cards. Whatever. Whatever. Let's drop it. Well, maybe they don't have Drown in the Lock. Thieves Guild Enforcer? No, no, no they got to. They're going to drop it here, though, on the Love Struck, right? Counter it. Oh, you're so good. The Fabled Rose living up to, uh, well, living up to its name. Living up to its dirty, dirty name. That's fine. I like I like when my opponent can both play a creature and counter counter my spells all for the low cost of three mana. You know, that's a, that's a good combo. That's a good thing to have in a standard magic deck. It really is. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise because they're a, they're a fucking liar. <laughs> Um, I don't really want Giant Killer. I already got one, and I'm not going to lie. Giant Killer has felt very underwhelming in this deck. Very underwhelming. So, sorry to, to sort of kick you out to the curb there, Giant Killer. But you're just not that good. I want to get this Ox down, and I, I, I should really let them know that I'm thinking. So, we're definitely dropping Ox. That's 10,000% happening. 
thing is, we're going to gain three mana from Colossal Plow coming up, right? Do I want to go ahead and drop a beast? I think so. So they're, they're definitely going to, you know, uh, put down a Thieves Guild and be like, Oh, I got your plow now. <laughs> By the way, I, I only just now realized that plow and now ROM. That tells you how how slow I am. <laughs> also, I think that was an impeccable Farmer John impersonation. So we don't want to end the turn on that note. No siree. I want to drop a Love Struck Beast. Love Struck. This way they can't just take out the ox and have things go hush hush. You know what I mean? Oh, we can also drop a giant killer. Sure. Does it make our edge wall a little less effective? Yeah, but we're also flooding the board. So I love to see that. Flood thy board. Now they do, they, they move that Lordus over like really, really early. Ruin crab. Oh no. Let's hope they don't have another blue mana. Oh, thank God. Because if they had blue, then that would for sure be blue into the story. And, well, we would never see the end of this game. Well, we would, actually. It would be very, very soon. The, the end is soon. The end is near? The end is nigh? What is that phrase? That That's, you know, a whole, whole other section of my videos. Can you name that phrase? With your host. It's, it's me. <laughs> Not CGB. My name's Chance. Nice to meet you. So our plan on our turn is to crew another plow. Don't mind if I do. Crew the ox and put the plow on the board so we can use the great hinge for less mana. Right? I should really um, do one of those numbers, though, to tap for it, right? Anyways, can they counter Greyhenge? They can. They can counter Greyhenge with a Drown in the Lock. That's incredibly upsetting. Please don't. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all I can do is ask nicely. Now, they do only have two cards besides the Lordris. Hey, let's go. Let us go. So we're going to drop the Edge Wall. Ah, should have waited. We tap their Thieves Guild. We can swing in with Colossal Plow. We can swing in with Love Struck. They do have the Ruin Crab to block, um, but I'm not. I'm not that worried about it. Forget about it. Come on, Jack Ass, <laughs> Radicast, the only, the only Rogues player to to have ever. <laughs> We're going to swing it with both to make sure something gets through. To have ever played Erebos' intervention. That's a lie, by the way. I'm being completely... Is it facetious or sarcastic there? You know, again, my, my English vocab... I... Well... I have I have a lot of words in my... In my reserve bank, so to speak. But the definitions aren't necessarily there. And they're not necessarily all attached in the way that they should be. Anyways, opponent's going to drop a Lotus followed by that uh, Merfolk Wind Robber, right? Oh, no, no, no. You, you got bigger plans than that. We only have 32, 31 cards left in our deck. That's all right. 30, 29. Sorry. I don't know how to count, obviously. That's my problem. <laughs> so what are we at? Six mana? We need seven for Amiria's Call, so we need another white mana in order to gain that. Yasharn, 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 Yasharn. I think we do go ahead and drop the Yasharn Arena. This will keep them from sacrificing the Merfolk Wind Robber to draw cards, right? I don't think they understood that when I when I played it down. Also, we'll keep them from doing the Fabled Passage stuff, right? So that could be that could be bonkers. Good. Could be overwhelmingly positive. I don't know if Plow draws us a card if I drop it, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I know Mammoth is good. Like, I know I want a Mammoth. Alright, so you're swinging in. And yeah, well, no, you're not. No, you're not, actually. We just gotta pass. Because if I swing in with that, all they do is replay Thieves Guild. And, well, we don't want that. So, we just leave things at... Th we just... <laughs> uh, we just leave things as is. 
essentially. I feel like we have a big enough board state. Now it's essentially, can we get them out of the ball game before those ruined crabs ruin our game? Because we only have 19 cards left, you know, and they got more rogues entering every turn. I just want to, I just want to farm some land. I'm just out here trying to play Farmer John, and y'all are really, you really wrecking my day, if I'm being honest. So that's going to boost the mammoth. Good old mammoth. Get down the edge wall. The edge wall. Get your edge wall. And we could have mirrored his call, put something in the sky, gives everything indestructible, which means we could swing in with pretty much everything. I mean, I, I don't see why not. They are tokens, so we don't get to draw with the Great Hinge, which, honestly, probably better that we're not drawing with the Great Hinge, because that's just going to help them out. This way, we'll give everything indestructible. We'll just swing like hell at their faces. Except for you, John Ox, because <laughs> you don't do anything. You don't do anything. So, they block Lotus to gain a little bit of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Block your Sharn. That'll help them mill. Block with Wind Robber. We're still getting in for six, eight damage. Puts them to four. They gain three. Puts them to seven. Right? So we're dealing five total. They can only replay one of those uh, Merfolk. They shouldn't be able to sacrifice the Wind Robber to draw a card either, so that's good for us. Fable Passage, like I said, won't work. So next turn, they can play down Thieves Guild. That's two from us. Puts us down to 15. What did they just take out? An edge wall? Yeah, and they gain some life, blah, blah, blah. So they play a land, puts us to... No, come on! <laughs> what is this? Fucking fantastic. I'm not salty. I'm happy about facing rogues. I'm happy that they found exactly what they needed just as things were starting to look up for us, you know? If they hadn't hit that ruined crab into, you know, two other rogues, I just don't know what I would have done. My day just wouldn't have turned out the same. I know that much for damn sure. All right, GG.